Welcome to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I am the host. And on this episode, I'll be debriefing last week's live interview with our strength and conditioning intern, Jordan Love. He is looking after the Corfu Grammarian senior women's team. And we discussed his journey in strength and conditioning. He, did, he mentioned how he his family uh, have worked in the medical industry. So there was a bias towards physiotherapy early days. Uh, but he had a passion for high performance, uh, being a footballer himself and having mates playing at a high level. Uh, he decided to take the road down the strength and conditioning high performance uh, route and absolutely loved it and hasn't looked back since. So he's um, done some work in psychology now, post-grad course. He's working at our gym uh, at Edge Training in Paran. He's also a strength and conditioning coach there. And he's doing big things in the football industry since working due to placement at the Geelong Falcons, as well as um, his internship and head strength and conditioning coach role at the Carlton Vehicle women's team. So it was a great chat with Jordy for the developing SNCs out there. Um, it'll definitely um, pick up some great gems that Geordie, um discusses throughout his career, what's helped him get a foot in the door and and create his own luck, so to speak. So definitely tune in for that one. And that will be also released early. We're going to release that next Friday on the podcast. So um, for those interested in listening to that one, you'll be able to listen to it next Friday. Uh, we also have a power tip, which I'll announce very shortly. I'll be live streaming on Instagram to answer your questions. And there was a fair few sent through this week, which were great. Uh, for those listening in the podcast world, you can email us at jackapapelicapro.com and I will and, and send through any of your problems or issues around your athlete development or perhaps your son or daughter might be having with your their training and, and physical preparation and I'll do my best to answer uh, those questions. As well as you can tune in live and, and send in your questions that way, and I'll do my best to, to answer them. Uh, we've got a one live podcast for next week. That will be with our strength and conditioning intern that's looking after the Glen Orkey program, which is in the State League of Tasmania. Uh, that's Tom Cleary. You can tune in for that episode at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Tuesday night. Um, and in terms of the podcast to be released this week, we have Hal Marsden that will be released on Tuesday. I worked with Hal at Edge Training. He was our high-performance manager before taking on the role as uh, st head strength and power coach and, re and head of rehabilitation at the Western Force, uh, which is in Perth, a professional rugby team. And before working at uh, Western Force, he was also working at Melbourne Storm for seven years. So, He's got great experience in the elite strength and conditioning, uh, elite sport realm, and we discussed his journey from being a professional rugby player to working in high-performance sports. So definitely tune in for that one. Whether you're an athlete looking to get some practical tips, Hal mentions his philosophy in strength and power development, as well as the strength and conditioning coaches that want to work in elite sport, you'll definitely get some key takeaways there to help your career. Our Get Better plan that is released every Wednesday, this presentation will be revolved around how to look after your future self. Uh, this is a topic that I'm uh, constantly trying to learn and, and discover and learn new methods to be able to uh, help me better prepare um, and also solve um, efficiencies, help solve um, areas that can make things be a little bit more seamless uh, and, and also ultimately help prioritise what's important in your current life, but also what's going to make things easier for you in the future because uh, we're constantly going to have problems. So we don't want to try and just find the easiest way to do things now that's only going to make things harder in the future. Whereas if we can work hard now and make life easier in the future, um, it's going to make it uh, probably a much more likelihood to have success in whatever pursuit you're trying to do, whether it be high performance in being an athlete or someone that wants to work in sport. Um, having the philosophy around looking after your future self is definitely something that you want to try and do if your aim is to grow and develop. So I'll discuss that in greater detail. And also it's a bit of a workshop as well. So there's some uh, exercises and questions to ask yourself on that Wednesday, um, get better plan podcast. 
And then Friday, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Jordan Love, our intern, will be released. That episode released on Friday. Of course, we have the premiere of all three of those episodes the night before. So for Hal Master, it'll be Monday night at 8 p.m. For the Get Better plan of looking at how to look after your future self, that will be Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And then for the Friday episode with Jordan Love, you can tune in and watch the highlights reel on YouTube at Thursday night, 8 p.m. All right, let's stream over to Instagram now to answer your questions. All right, so we'll start with this one was sent through via email. Gary, how should I warm up for a running session? So thank you for the question, Gary. Great to see podcasters sending in uh, their questions. Uh, it very much how to warm up for your running session will very much depend on what type of running session you're doing. So if there's high speed running in that running session, we want to make sure that we do some form of mobility, um, particularly if, you're been, if you've been sitting down uh, all day. We want to try and open up your anterior part of the hip, so your hip flexors, try and lengthen out your hamstrings, free up your spine with some rotational movement. Um, so typically um, a warm-up for a speed session will involve some sort of form of mobility for about five minutes. And then we'll do some light movement, like uh, some squats, some lateral squats, so working through different planes of motion, frontal plane, sagittal plane, transverse plane, so rotational work, um, making sure that we're getting the body nice and active and, and we're preparing the, session, the, the muscles that are going to be utilised for change of direction and high-speed running. Um, so we'll do some movement-based work. All throughout our mobility, our movement-based work, we're doing some jogging, some lateral shuffles, so getting our um, foot and ankle complex ready for that uh, dynamic loading through those joints. Um, we can throw in some plyometrics and some landing mechanics um, to get the body really fired up as well. Um, and then that will also help your preparation from a um, tissues point of view, so making sure you get your moving fast, not um waiting for for the first sprint but actually doing some speed drills some run throughs uh and really gearing your body up for the whole um uh, session ahead if it's just simply an aerobic session like a fart leg run on a saturday and you're in the off season pre-season you can keep that warm up pretty straightforward unless you, you you feel like you need some extra recovery and some mobility work um, if you're feeling pretty good a warm-up for an aerobic fart leg session could be as simple as five minutes of just doing 40, 40 seconds um, of some, some sort of stride throughs, run throughs, and jogging, and then a 20 second walk, and just get the body temperature up, and, and away you go for the far leg run. So, typically, when you're warming up for a running session, Gary, think about what type of session you've got ahead of you, and therefore that should dictate the type of warm up that you want to do. Next question was from Sarah Should I take protein powder? Uh, great question, Sheriff. Thanks for sending that through. I um, would take protein powder if your goal um, is to in you know, increase your critical mass, but mainly um, my main advice around nutrition and supplements and spending money on supplements, so it's t generally a waste of money unless your nutrition is down pat. So you're doing the, the, the basics really, really well and you've been doing that for a long period of time. And if you've hit a plateau, then sure enough, maybe investing some supplements will help you break that plateau. But I would be waiting until um, the basics uh, have stopped working for you. So things like uh, making sure you're having protein from animal products in the morning, making sure you're having plenty of vegetables, you're eating clean food. Um, so, yeah, eating, eating wholesome food, try and stick away from takeaway um, and, and making sure that your, your routine is consistent uh, ultimately, the body can take time to adjust. So finding a routine that works for you, um, that, of course, you're enjoying and you, you, you're enjoying the taste of those foods. It's not boring for you. It's not monotonous. Um, but I would be focusing much more of my energy on on what you're eating opposed to spending time and, and, and money on, on supplements. If you were to go down the protein route and you're and you recommended to do that, um, then just make sure that you start light with with the amount of protein that you take and just let your digestive system adjust to the protein powder as well. Hopefully that helps answer your question, Sarah. Uh, but largely, like, like the first question from Gary, it will depend on your goal um, and 
hopefully f- a, a food eating like focusing on eating real food will allow you to reach your goals through you know, whether that be increasing your muscle mass or just trying to maintain your your muscle mass the next question is from victor i'm trying to lose three kilos uh, to help my speed and my endurance what should i do Great question, Victor. And this was sent through via email as well this week. And that's our last question. So unless you're listening on Instagram and you've got a question for us, then hit the question button on the bottom of your screen. More than happy to answer. Um, but the, in terms of losing body fat, um, the key things to focus, obviously you need to train uh, and you need to train hard to put a stimulus on the body to be able to drop body fat and increase your lean muscle mass, which will help help. Uh, stimulate metabolism, help burn more calories. But the majority of successful people that drop uh, and lose weight, it's because they've changed their lifestyle. So uh, you'll hear the saying all the time, you can't out-train a bad lifestyle. So make sure that what you're eating uh, is healthy. Uh, Avoid takeaway, avoid greasy foods, sugary foods, all the things that are in wrappers that are frozen, processed foods. Try and eat wholesome, clean food um, that's going to energize your body it's going to help you feel good uh, it's going to nourish your body it's going to fuel your training and then of course you need to go hungry uh, and that's probably something that's undervalued if you're trying to drop body weight and that's your goal you will need to be in a, a calorie deficit um, the key is that you don't starve yourself but you will ultimately need to be in a calorie deficit if your goal is to drop body fat and therefore going hungry um, is your body using its own metabolism to burn um, your own fuel so going off rather than just constantly feeding the body new calories to burn um, we want to try and burn our own fuel uh, and that's by going hungry and being in that calorie deficit that's where you're going to be dropping the the body fat so really important for those that want to lose weight you need to be going hungry at least once a day and, and allow yourself to go hungry and feel hungry for 30 minutes to an hour um, that's not going to do any detriment to your health uh, I would recommend um, you, you drink water, you drink some herbal teas during that period to get you through. Um, but ultimately, if you're not going hungry and you're trying to lose weight and you're not getting the results that you're expecting, um, then it's probably because you're overeating and um, during your training recommendations. So I wouldn't recommend training more, rather um, focus on what you're eating um, and, and see how that goes for you. So great question, Victor. Hopefully that helps. And ultimately, if you're having trouble as well, make sure that you um, seek some professional advice with a sports dietitian because that's their expertise and they can definitely help you out. If you you need one, um, just let me know. I'm I'm more than happy to hook you up. And obviously, we've had a fair few on the podcast. I'm more than happy to refer one that's near your area, mate. Next question's come through from Dijal. This is live from Instagram. So if you are tuned in and you want to add, um, ask to answer your question, just send it through. Trying to improve my young bloke's 2K to help with his AFL. He is 10 years old. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, thanks for sending through, Jail. Um, my thoughts around 2K time trial for a 10-year-old would be it is quite a long distance for, for a 10-year-old. Uh, so it's something that ultimately for for kids under the age of probably 14 years of age i wouldn't put too much pressure on their performance from an athletic point of view we want to make sure they're enjoying it um and that they're in yeah they're having fun because that's going to ultimately um allow them to play football for longer um so it is a sensitive area um having big expectations on things like 2k time trial 20 minute sprint at a young age um, but i do understand um being um, competitive and, and, and the industry is super competitive, uh, the earlier start can have an advantage later on for sure. So there's a, there's a balancing act there and some kids generally just love pushing themselves and I've worked with a few kids um, that just absolutely love challenging themselves and pushing themselves and for them it's not a, it's not a stress or it's not a strain having those expectations. So um, Obviously, you would know best of him being your son, but um, something that I thought I'd add in. In terms of advice, uh, typically running three times a week would be uh, a good a good area, uh, but if he's playing a lot of sport, maybe it's just once or twice uh, to complement his long-distance running. And we don't want to be doing long, steady-state efforts. We want to, we want to try and focus more on, the, on uh, the quality of running at his age. So 
um, his body's still growing um, and we want to make sure that he's um, developing uh, as he should. So focusing on um, maybe 80 meter efforts, 60 meter efforts, 100 meter efforts, where because he's uh, he's worked, he hasn't had the years of preseason under him yet. His ability to be able to maintain good technique for longer periods of time would be um, not there yet. So doing things like 500 meter efforts, 800 meter efforts, or two 1k efforts um, may have a detriment to to someone at that age. So breaking it up. Uh, into shorter bursts he'll enjoy that a lot more and all you do is you just start to change the rest period so week one he might be resting after a 100 meter effort for 20 seconds after a couple of weeks as he starts to improve his his fitness he doesn't need to go for now 200 meters he might only go 100 meters but he, he rests for 10 seconds so that's how you can improve his aerobic capacity that way uh, and of course the volume as well so he might start with you know, two sets of 10 100 meter efforts and then in a few weeks time he's doing three sets of 10 uh, for an example um, but a most important thing would be for him to enjoy the training keep it fun make sure there's lots of games and uh, ultimately if he's loving the training he's going to do more of it and if he's doing more of it he's going to get fitter and improve his 2k time trial the other last uh, piece of advice would be just to simply have a strategy um, for his 400 meter laps so having a goal for each lap and having a good pacing strategy will definitely help improve his performance for the 2K time trial. And that's not a bad habit for a young athlete uh, to practice as well is the, the way that you actually perform that 2K time trial uh, and have a strategy going into it and play with a strategy that works best for him. Um, so hopefully that advice helps, mate. Let me know how you go with it. Next questions. Jack Lawrence, any tips on goal kicking? That's definitely not my area. That's more in the skill technical area uh we're just propeller pro purely strength and conditioning coaches mate so we're going to stick in my lane and i'll refer on i would go to uh, the kicking dynamics or the kicking consultant um tim schmidt josh gordon that's their area of expertise mate so check them out on youtube and instagram and i'm sure if you direct message them they'll give you some tips and um how to improve your goal kicking jack And that's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in live. This week's power tip is to try contrast training. So simply contrast training is lifting something fast. So it might be external weight or your own body weight. Lift as, as explosively as you possibly can. So that's where we're focusing more on speed and power with something that's heavy. And we want to try and stick with similar movement patterns. So a classic example would be a a uh, box squat where we're loading up the barbell and lifting as, as relatively heavy as we can with good technique, of course, and then we're supersetting that with a box jump. All right, so it's a similar movement pattern, um, and those two movements should complement each other rather than doing a superset of a heavy box squat with a lateral lunge or a RDL or another um, max force production strength max strength based movement thinks one speed with one heavy and that there's plenty of research on contrast training uh, it was particularly popular um, for olympic based events but it's now really popular particularly in season to be able to hold on to your um, strength and power development it takes less time as well because you don't have to um, to complete one exercise and then move on to the next you're getting two exercises done in a similar time frame um, and they, they should help your performance as well. So you know, you'll get extra neural drive from lifting fast, and you're going to also get that extra motor unit recruitment by lifting heavy. So um, they're complementary. Give them a go. You can also, of course, do the same with the upper body by doing a heavy bench press with some sort of med ball throw. will have the same effect. That's the power tip for this week. Um, for those interested in having a Christmas program, I know the NAB League boys will finish in December and won't get back until February. We do have an online strength and conditioning program. And for those listening in the podcast world or if you're listening live and you join up before the end of 2021, I'll give you a 20% discount if you email us at jack at preparelikeapro.com. Make sure you add in with a subject heading podcast. So that's for the podcasters out there because we know you're you are the best uh, clients, athletes to work with. So we want to make sure we give back. So if you whether you're a parent 
and you want your son or daughter to train with us or you're an athlete and you're listening in and you want to invest in your training to get to the next level and get a competitive edge, then we find that this December, January period is the most important time to get that competitive edge and we would love to work with you. So email us and uh, we'll hook up with an awesome program. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next episode.